Good morning, my lovelies. You are live in my kitchen, in the Queen's Curry Kitchen. I am in Queen's. Am I making curry? Well, yeah, maybe I'm making one curry dish and I'm doing a pasta. I'm doing two pasta dishes. So welcome in my kitchen. I am going to show you how we're going to do pasta two ways. And today we're going to make something with rotini. So I've already boiled it and then I've rinsed it out and then I've hit it with a dash of olive oil. So you can see it's a little bit shiny and glossy. Hi, Dublina Day. Welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. If this is your first time, don't let it be your last. We definitely want to be friends. Um, so I'm going to make this into a pasta dish, which is going to be pasta with cheese. That's going to be for my daughter, and I'm going to make it in this casserole so that she can eat it. It's going to be one portion. And then the other thing I'm going to make with the same thing is going to be a cold pasta salad. So if you have time um, during the week when you, can, when you just have enough time to boil some pasta, you can actually boil a little more pasta and you can get more mileage out of it, right? Arusa Naz, welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. I hope you guys are having a lovely morning um, on this is it thursday yes it's thursday see i lose track of time sometimes okay so without any further ado let's get started if you don't know me my name is nupur chef nupur whatever you want to call me the lady who cooks indian food the auntie who brings indian food whatever you want to call me i make indian food in my kitchen in queens and i also teach other people how to make flavorful indian food in their homes i have a line of spices and chai and books that make your life into indian cooking a little bit easier than if you had to be on the struggle bus so if you haven't followed me, take a minute to follow me on my page. There is a free chana masala recipe download on the page on my website, www.queenscurrykitchen.com. Okay, <clears throat> with the formalities out of the way, I've told you who I am, where I'm from. If you want to drop your introduction in the comments below, let me know so I can greet you properly on this live video. <clears throat> I am going to get started. Let's start with making the warm pasta that I had promised you. Now you can do this with any kind of pasta that you have in your home. Anything that your children love, anything that you love. It can be any kind of pasta, okay? So even though I'm going to be using a store-bought marinara sauce, I do make sauce from scratch sometimes, uh, but today I'm going to use the store-bought marinara sauce. I will tell you, okay, so Arusa is from Flushing, all right, so you're my neighbor, and Elliot, hello, welcome, welcome. So let's get started. I am going to use the store-bought marinara sauce, but I will tell you how we can elevate it just a little bit to seem like it's just been made freshly, okay? So in a pan, I have some hot oil. I am gonna go in with some garlic. This is minced garlic, and there is no such thing as too much garlic, right? When you're making pasta dishes or continental food, do not put garlic in hot oil. This is like the biggest tip that I like to give people. Start your oil to be warm or cold and then add the garlic so that when you build up the warmth into the oil, it gradually infuses. It's not a very pungent hit like it is in Asian and Indian cooking where garlic is like really pow, like it comes and hits you in the face. This is not one of those things, right? And I learned this trick from Sarah Moulton like back in the day, I think 20 something years ago when she used to be on the Food Network. This is something that I learned from her. So definitely start out with warm to cold oil. I have used light olive oil and then just gradually turn up the heat to saute the garlic for a second. Right now I'm going to try to eyeball how much pasta do I need to fill this casserole dish. And since I'm not putting anything else, I might just put a couple of vegetables um, to keep it healthy. So I think this much is enough and then I will be topping it with cheese. So this is what's going to make the cold salad and this is what's going to make the hot pasta dish. Right? Now I won't be adding any other onions or whatever kind of aromatics, but I will be adding some bell peppers. Only because I love them. You can also add spinach, you can add chicken, like whatever you have at home you can add. There is no right or wrong to this. Just toss it around for a few seconds. Now you can increase the heat because you want to just get some color on it. Good morning, Ruby. How are you? Good morning, Kina. Good morning, good morning, everybody that's tuning in. I welcome you to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. We are making pasta two ways. And if I get a chance, I will also show you how I make um, Indian curry, which is made from yogurt and chickpea flour. I know, Ruby, that's your favorite. But today I'm going to make it with spinach instead of with pakoras. Okay, so you can see the garlic is sizzling. At this time, I am going to go ahead and add just a little bit of Italian seasoning. 
you know, I eyeball everything. I don't measure one damn thing in my kitchen. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah, because I do have to be somewhere for 12 o'clock. And it's a one hour drive and I'm still here. <laughs> okay, quick saute. And then in goes the sauce. This sauce, the store-bought sauce. I keep talking about how to elevate store-bought stuff to really make it seem like it's fresh and you just made it at home. These are the little trips, tips and hacks that you do to make it. So you warm up the store-bought sauce. You really warm it up through and through. Add a little bit of water so that all of the vegetable goodness can come into the sauce. And you know, the store-bought sauces, when they sit in the fridge, they tend to thicken up a little bit. Also, the extra liquid that you put in is going to help to convert your al dente pasta into perfectly cooked pasta. So, my daughter does not like it al dente. She likes it a little bit better done than al dente. Now, obviously, since we've added water we will need to adjust the seasoning at some point so i'm just going to add a little salt pepper a little pepper black pepper if you want to add white pepper you can add pepper hello mital patel hello shafali good morning to all of you all right so now when it gets to this bubbling stage you're gonna throw in all your pasta no, i might just add a little bit more what the heck right and then you're just going to toss everything together so almost think like in your head just imagine as if you're making chili paneer or something but actually you're not making chili paneer <laughs> you're making italian food and you'll see when you use a pasta that has grooves like this all of the sauce actually gets sucked in into the grooves that's really great and um, if you really want to make it super cool then instead of adding regular water just add some of the pasta water that you can reserve that really gives your pasta a nice nice beautiful taste now last but not the least we're going to go in with a little pat of butter before we turn off the stove and this is totally optional if you don't want to add <laughs> you're hungry come on over baby i got you just add a little pat of butter to maintain the moisture and this is something you can even do for parties. Like if you get your pasta to this stage, you can literally do this for parties. You see how dry this is? That's it. You don't need to overcook this stuff. Turn the stove off. I also like to add a little cilantro. Don't ask me why, but I just like to. Because I don't like parsley. But cilantro is cool. Cilantro is life, man. Like, come on. Okay, let's see if I can find a chopping board or something so I can show you the next step. One moment, I'll be right with you. This is what happens when you decide to do live videos on the fly without planning anything, right? Oh, that's right. See, Kina says she adds a little butter to her pasta. See, great minds always think like, now I know why we're friends, Kina. I just know it. All right, so in goes, this is a clean casserole. You can do any kind of ramekin. If you're doing a portion, small portion size, you can do smaller. You can do a big casserole, a glass dish, whatever you got, baby, right? And what also you can do is if you use a store-bought Alfredo sauce, you can add a little bit to this for a nice pinkish color. It gives a really nice taste. So just try to combine the sauces. There are no rules. Like, do not let anybody tell you, oh, you can't do this. Hey, Hala, I can do whatever I want. It's my kitchen, my rules, my grocery. I can do whatever I want. The point is it should taste good. And if you have picky kids at home or picky family members who give you a hard time, they should eat it. That's the whole goal of getting in the kitchen, right? It's not to be on the Food Network. It's not to be in some cooking show or whatever. The whole goal of getting in the kitchen is that we should eat a delicious, sometimes healthy, sometimes not healthy <laughs> meal, which is cooked at home by someone you love. And if you're the person in charge of the cooking, then obviously you love yourself, right? So make it a habit to Cook simple meals at home. It really does not take that long. Now, if you wanted to serve this to your kids, you can, by the time you do this, you can always make some garlic bread in your air fryer. Put bread and cooking spray, spray your bread with cooking spray and put it in the air fryer on the pizza setting for about two to three minutes. 
and at the same time both these things could come out like kids will go to olive garden and eat an entire bowl of pasta but when you give them food at home they just make faces hey i don't want that i don't want this no you want it so you, our job as moms is to make them want what we're making <laughs> i don't know how many of you agree with that but yeah i'm a little crazy but i got to a point in my life when my kid was about maybe five or six and we used to live in a large family so she had cousins too and my sister and our sister in law blah, blah, and I were responsible for cooking all the meals, right? So we would get in the kitchen as early as 10 o'clock in the morning. Kids would go to school at 9. We would get in the kitchen at 10. And we would start cooking for this large family of 8 or 9 people. And then what we realized was by the time our kids came back from school at 3 o'clock, they only wanted the freaking disgusting, the Chinese takeout thing from the, <laughs> from the neighborhood takeout restaurant. And we were like, really? We've been busting our ass for no reason. Anyway, let me just also keep the focus here so y'all can see what I'm doing. Whenever you use cheese, don't melt the cheese or don't put the cheese in the pan. It should always go on as a topping so that when you bake it or when you broil it, this cheese is going to melt and it's going to create a nice blanket. So some children like their meals to be too cheesy and some like them not so cheesy if your children like cheese then when you're plating the rotini into the casserole just add a bed of sliced cheese and then top it off with the rest of the thing okay now this is ready to go into the air fryer it's also ready to go into an oven or micro this is a microwave safe dish so it can go anywhere and um, children can come and help themselves when they come back from school. If you have teenage or preteen kids, they should be able to do this in the microwave. Uh, this tends to get a little hot. So always teach them to put a plate underneath uh, and then pick up that. Or if you have older kids in the house who don't know how to cook but know how to handle stuff from the microwave or whatever, this is what they need to do. Okay, so this is ready, done and dusted. I'm going to put it away. Let me quickly show you what I'm actually making and for my hubby oh boy it is so foggy from this thing hold on let me just try to fix the fog that's coming from this dish and also i think there's paper behind my camera which is not cool okay so I'm making this is called curry and it's a combination of yogurt or buttermilk milk buttermilk buttermilk and or yogurt some water and two tablespoons two of these ladles full of chickpea flour that i have, to, that have combined into a thin consistency this is after it's been boiling for about um 19 minutes so it thickens down i've added some turmeric do not add salt to your curry right so this is going to be the base and how we are going to flavor it is by creating a tempering. So I'm going to show you how we make that tempering. The only thing I've added to it while I'm boiling it is turmeric. I've added some, this is a curry leaf and I've added one bay leaf, right? So this is very creamy. Now, typically the thing that goes into these is a chickpea flour dumpling or um, pakoras as we call it. That's the typical thing that goes into a dish like this. But today what I'm going to do is I am going to chop <clears throat> some spinach and I'm going to put that for a couple of reasons one being that when I come back from work I don't want the pakoras to soak up all the liquid and then the curry is going to become too thick and the second being that I'm really not in the mood of eating anything fried when I come back at the end of the day so I'm just going to use the same old pan that I had before there's no rocket science so the beauty of a good curry is in its tempering. Like everything, it's tempering is called tarka or chonk in, uh, in Hindi. That's what we call it. And there is signature temperings for every kind of dish in the Indian cuisine. Right? So in goes some olive oil. If you do this with ghee, I kid you not, it will elevate your curry to the next level. If you give this tempering with ghee for a dal or for a curry, it's really going to be some next level shit that you're gonna love. Now I'm also gonna go ahead and add this little piece of black cardamom to the broth that is simmering. It just gives it a really nice flavor. Okay, let's jump in and see what we need for the tempering. So I, I went from Italy to India, <laughs> back to India making this tempering. 
Okay, the first thing that I'm going to do is add these dry red chilies. These are arabol. This is Kashmiri. Whatever you can find. If you like them spicy, then you can go with the smaller chilies. The smaller they are, the spicier they are. Right? right? Then I'm going to add in some fenugreek seeds. These are the seeds from which methi sag is grown. Okay? So we're going to add those. If you have mustard seeds, add those. I don't have them today. I haven't been cooking too much at home, I guess. So we're going to wait for this to, to splutter just a little bit. I'm trying to find my esophatida, which eludes me right now, but I promise you, I'm gonna, I'm determined to find it and bring it to you. Okay, and I know that I will be using paprika or Kashmiri mirch. So one trick, whenever you use Kashmiri mirch or paprika, I've shown you this technique before, how to draw the maximum flavor. And the way we do it is by keeping some water handy. So now you can see the fenugreek seeds have turned brown. I'm gonna add the cumin seeds. So these are all our aromatics that are going in. Then in goes the nigella seeds. If you have mustard seeds, add those. I just didn't have them, so I'm gonna use nigella instead. Give it a little toss. Add some esophatida or hing. I'm gonna keep the water ready, because I'm gonna need that. Okay. Now, my mom uses a shit ton of garlic in her curry tempering. I typically don't do that, but since she told me to start doing it, I've been doing it lately. So let's go ahead with this garlic, like a lot of garlic. And we have to cook this. So now you see the difference in how the garlic sizzles when you put it in hot oil for Indian or Asian food compared to when it just builds up the temperature slowly when you're doing continental or Italian food. That's the difference in how you treat the garlic, right? So we are just going to keep on cooking this garlic. The other aromatic that I'm going to add is a dry fenugreek herb. Remember the seeds that we added? This is like stage three of those seeds. Those seeds are planted and methi is grown, which is a very delicate green, which has a very bitter and earthy bite to it. And then those leaves are then dried and made into an herb so that you can use them. Oh my God, the way my kitchen smells right now. I mean, thank God I have not uh, I don't have any allergies or sinuses, but the way my kitchen smells right now, it's just in freaking incredible. Okay, so now you can see that the garlic is roasting beautifully. You'll know from the aroma that it's ready for the next step. I'm gonna go and grab some more curry leaves. Okay, I'm gonna get these curry leaves. Now, sadly, curry leaves do not have a substitute. There is no substitute of flavor in curry leaves. So it's almost like if pepper and lemon had a baby, then it would taste like curry leaves. But you, you have to buy curry leaves for what they are. You can't, there is no essential oil that you can buy. There is no dried version of this oil. And always rip them apart so that the oils are released, right? Don't put whole curry leaves. Always rip them apart. They tend to jump around a little bit in the pan, so be careful with that. In goes your coriander seed powder. I've already added turmeric to the broth, so I won't be adding it again. Just cook the, hi. Just cook the coriander seed powder for a few seconds. Just remember, you're not trying to burn this. So keep the heat very, very low at this time. Okay, and you'll see it's gonna start sizzling and you'll see little bubbles around it. So you know that it's cooking, right? When that happens, you're going to immediately add the paprika or the Kashmiri dead chili which is the last thing in your tempering if you want to add garam masala you can I might add it just before serving now as soon as you add the Kashmiri dead chili turn off your stove and then to extract the maximum color hit it with some water ideally also cover it so that all the red color will be maintained you're not trying to burn it you just want that beautiful red coloration i'm gonna go ahead and add some indian curry powder this is the brand that i use mdh if anyone is interested i'm just gonna swirl that in and you'll get this nice beautiful golden almost caramel ish color okay now i'm gonna take you over to the curry that's simmering and i will show you how i'm going to drop this in Typically, if you're doing a tempering and adding it, to, you can say, it, it, see, it's hot in this kitchen. 
Typically, if you're doing a tempering and adding it to something, you will hear the sizzling sound, right? But because we added uh, the water to our Kashmiri red chili, you won't be able to see, you won't be able to hear the sizzle. But you see how it's boiling up? At this stage, you're going to go ahead and add this tempering. There we go. And immediately, the texture of the curry will change. The flavor of the curry will be through the roof. Now, like I said, I have not added salt. So just refrain from adding salt up until this point because salt will make the yogurt curdle, right? Once it comes to a boil like this and becomes nice and thick, you see how immediately it became thick? Even though I did not add any thickening agent in my tempering, right? I'm just going to grab my spatula so I can... And listen, do not go anywhere because we still have to make the pasta salad. I didn't abandon that project. I remember it, but I just wanted to do this because it was screaming for attention. I'm just going to scrape off all this goodness. You can see this guy is like... And I make my curry in the instant pot. I ain't nobody got time to stand over a stove and babysit the food. Like, no. Okay. So even when I make it with the pakoras, I make it in an instant pot. But whatever I'm doing in an instant pot, you can obviously do it on a stove top, on a pot, on a heavy bottom pot. Okay, so this is done. Now I'm going to add salt and I will turn off the instant pot. It's down to three minutes. It was up at 30 minutes for searing. I'm going to let this finish the cycle of it. Um, I can add some cilantro. I will add some salt later, but not now. I'm going to add some cilantro. It smells freaking incredible right now. I mean, I wish you could be here and smell it. It's really, really smelling incredible. Okay, so the last step that I'm going to do to that is before I uh, serve the curry, I have spinach over here. Like I said, today I'm going to make it with spinach instead of pakoras. I'm just going to finally chiffonade the spinach and I will drop it into the curry and then simmer it for a couple of minutes and it'll be ready to serve. I will garnish it with some ginger juliennes and that'll be it, right? So here you go, I've just turned it off. That's that, and I'm gonna cover it later and it's going to be there, okay? So now we're moving on to making our cold pasta dish. Just rinse this pot. Check out my little fountain, how cute is that, right? A little pocket of peace right here. Okay, so. Let me give you all the ingredients that we need for this. Let me get all of this stuff out of the way that we do not need anymore. I'm going to put you back on the stand. All right. So this is where we're going to make our pasta. I am going to make the cold version of it. And it's a pasta salad. So the more it sits in your fridge, the tastier it gets. Right? I'm going to be using a combination of mayonnaise, some vegetables, and some olive oil, salt and pepper. I'm also going to be using, let me see what I have. I will use a dash of barbecue sauce because you know I love my barbecue sauce. And if you have uh, like a robusto Italian dressing or something, try to use that. I think I'm all out of it today. So I won't be using it. I will probably use some more lemon juice. Okay, so we are good, right? Now for the pasta, if you can keep it in the fridge before you toss the salad, that's great. If you don't have that kind of time, that's fine too. Okay, so the pasta goes in. The mayonnaise that I'm going to use is a Russian mayonnaise, right? And you, if you don't have this, like I live in a neighborhood where we have everything from everywhere. But if you don't have this, you can absolutely use Hellman's mayonnaise or Veginaise or whatever you have access to, right? That, we are going to use some red peppers some green peppers so this is the crunch so whenever you're gonna make a salad you have to have all the components you have to have a protein you have to have something soft something crunchy and of course you have to have the aromatics right so that doesn't change anything a little sea salt a little bit of pepper I'm not a fan of pepper, but for salads, you do need them. Okay. 
Now we're going to go ahead and add the Italian seasoning. It's the same seasoning that I put in the pasta before. Just a pinch of it is fine. You don't need a whole lot. If you don't have this, you can use just parsley or just oregano and it's totally fine. I am going to go ahead and add my favorite tahini, which I add to every damn thing in the world. That goes in. Now I'm going to add the mayonnaise. So the lady that I'm making this for, she doesn't like her salads to be too creamy. So I'm just going to add it with a lot of caution. If you're making this for like a holiday party or for like a potluck that you're going to, you can make it as creamy or not. And then once you make it and toss it together, leave it in the fridge for um, overnight. So just make it the night before you have to go to the party or whatever. And I am telling you, it's going to be delicious the next day. Right? So you can make it as creamy or as light as you want it. The good thing with this mayonnaise, which is like the Russian mayonnaise, I don't even know what it's called because everything is written in Ruski, which I don't speak or read. But it says this. So I caught hold of a lady who was shopping in this aisle and I said, is this good? She says, yes, this is very good. Take it. So they had different ones. They had ones with parsley. They had one with dill, but I took the basic one, right? Now to give my salad a little bit of a smoky flavor, I like to add one little dash of barbecue sauce. And this is totally optional. It does make your salad a little bit on the sweeter side. So if you don't like that, then just add a couple of drops of liquid smoke. Okay, just a little bit, just, just a little bit. I think it's going to need a little more mayo and it's going to need oil and lemon juice. Okay, so not too much mayo because I know she doesn't like anything that's creamy or cheesy. So this is for my friend who's expecting some guests and uh, she doesn't have too many kitchen skills. So just helping her out a little bit. Fresh garlic. And of course, what is life without cilantro? Are you guys still here? No one's talking to me. Where are all the comments at? Guys, like, come on. Okay, so give it a good toss. The more it chills, the tastier it's going to be. Add a little olive oil. A little lemon juice. Hello, Tage. How are you? Yes, Italians will be shocked at pasta. Same way the Chinese will be shocked at our uh, concept of chili paneer. The same way that Punjabis will be shocked that what the hell is chicken tikka masala. Because in India, mango lassi and chicken tikka masala do not exist, right? So we make it our own and that's why we are us. If you look at the um, geography of India, it's shaped like a funnel. So all the invaders came in from the north. How do I make the dumpling? Oh, the dumpling is just the pakora. Mithali, the, uh, mithal, the dumpling that I make is just simple pakoras. I make them with uh, potato and onion. If you go to my YouTube channel, there should be a version of pakoras that I've done. There, there are many versions that I've done. So try to catch it on the replay. If you can't find it, just send me a DM. I will send you a link directly to, um, to that video that I've put out there. And I'm, I've made it on the live video as well, right? Well, I don't know about the movie, Vandana. I don't watch too many, but I've watched Queen. But, and I'm trying to think like what part of that movie had uh, the pasta making. All right. Now is the time to taste. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a cool little trick. I'm going to take one or two bell pepper strips and I'm going to cut them into smaller pieces. Now, remember, we are not adding any onions to this, right? So... We are just going to give it a little more crunch. And I think when you make smaller pieces, then it comes in every bite. And then the larger pieces. If you have cherry tomatoes, you can add cherry tomatoes. If you have fresh dill or whatever. Oh, you know what? I have fresh dill. I could add that. So I just feel like don't let it restrict you. Yeah, it's great to keep food authentic. But if you can't make it your own, then it's useless. It's like, you know, art in an art gallery and art that you practice for yourself. That's the difference, right? It's not meant for a museum or a gallery. It's meant for you. If you cannot personalize your food, get out of the kitchen. It's great to follow recipes every now and then. Like you see, personally, if I had to eat this, I would have definitely added more mayonnaise because I like my salads to be rather creamy. This ain't it. Um, that's not how she wants it and that's totally okay. I can respect that. I have some fresh dill in here. 
I also have some radishes from yesterday. Remember the red radish that we were talking about? Maybe I'll put one, if not too many. I won't put too many. These already washed and the tops have been trimmed and I've kept it in the fridge so that I can use it whenever I need to. I've seen that if I don't prep the food and it's just there, I'll just never get to it. It's just the nature of the beast that I am. Um, and I also don't have the luxury of time of having so many hours when I can just sit there and make something from scratch on a daily basis. I have my own business to run and I work a job in the evening in my husband's restaurant. So it's like I have my hands full and then some, right? In, in the middle of that, I have to do my social media. I have to ship products to people who are placing. Oh, by the way, all the people that are placing orders for the spice blends. Um, thank you very much. I will be shipping everything out on Monday. Also for the chai orders that came in yesterday, I will be shipping everything out on Monday. If you ordered the ebook, which I know a bunch of you have ordered the ebook from the website, um, that should be an instant download. So check your inbox. It should be in your inbox. If you, if you bought an ebook, make sure you check your inbox. It should be there already. Um, hello, Tej. Good morning to you. Hello, hello, Jitesh. Welcome. Okay, so this pasta salad is ready. I am not going to do too much to it. It's killing me that it's not creamy, but you know what? It's not for me to make that decision. I am going to add a little more dill to it to kind of freshen it up a little bit. So when you add things like lemon juice or you add one fresh herb just before you put it in the fridge, it really elevates the taste of whatever it is that you're making. Okay, so there is a reason why God gave us so many herbs. And when you go into delis and you buy these salads by the box full, you pay like almost $8.99, $10.99. If it's Whole Foods, you're probably paying $12.99 a pound or whatever. You don't need to do that. You can actually make this very easily at home. And the longer it stays in the fridge, the better it gets actually. So that's really, really good. Some people like to add a little dash of sugar to their salads. Uh, but I feel like American mayonnaise is already so loaded with sugar. You don't need any more sugar. Okay, I'm just going to put this in a Tupperware box to send it to her house. But since you guys always like me to plate stuff, I'm going to also plate it and show you. How many people want to see a fancy plating of this salad? I know Kina definitely does. They're always asking, oh, can you plate it nicely? Can you? Yes, I can plate it nicely. So just a quick recap. We took the rotini pasta. We made a hot casserole with marinara sauce and cheese and vegetables this is one version of it this is the other version of the same rotini pasta this is the other version of the same rotini pasta so one pasta two ways that's what we're doing and uh, if you were with me from the beginning then you've obviously seen it all if you were not with me from the beginning then just catch the replay and hit me up with any questions that you have regarding what we just made now how do we decide how to plate this thing what kind of plates to use what kind of so I think the biggest uh, the biggest indicator that you get is from the color of the dish itself, right? So let me show you a quick uh, demonstration. And I know I'll have to wash like extra dishes after this, but I'm going to do this just to prove something to you guys. Hold on. Okay, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to plate this pasta in different colored dishes and you're going to tell me which one looks the best, right? So this is on white. Your eyes are going to be the judge. And then I will plate it in what I think looks really good. And then you tell me if I was right or if I was right. <laughs> okay. This is on black. And you know, the more you practice this, so I'm an artist and a fashion designer um, in my professional life. I did that for 25 years before I moved into food. So I definitely have an eye for color, for combining colors and textures. Not everybody's gifted like that, but trust me, the more you practice it, the better you become at it. So don't let that get in the way of anything. Okay, now I'm just going to use a spoon and clean it up a little bit. Just gonna gather this right into the middle okay and then just place it strategically so you can see all the color spot and then i'm going to hold up these three plates and you will tell me in the comments which presentation you like the most okay and then i will show you the one that i think looks better than all three 
and whenever like i've said whenever you use red peppers or cherry tomatoes put them on the top so that the colors pop and red is a very very appetizing color so if you're not using red in your food presentation honey you should definitely think about it okay so this is a very lightly creamed salad my element of red in this case will be this you can add chili peppers if you wish you can add an extra drizzle of creamy tahini or whatever or any dressing that you use so these are the three options right look at this now you tell me whether it looks best on this okay you're gonna tell me in the comments right so is the black a good presentation is the green a good presentation or is the white a good presentation right so these are the three options you have to choose you're going to tell me in the comments and then i'm going to tell you what i like to present it and how i like to present it and why i will tell you the reason as well okay so let me know in the comments which is the plating that you like the best okay jitesh says black is great okay i kind of agree and um, i'll also tell you the logic behind it kina says black is great yep that's correct i like black out of all three of them and the biggest reason for that is that the pasta itself is a light color right so when you have a light color and you put it on a dark background it really makes it pop it makes it look very elegant and as we speak i am actually plating it into something that i think does full justice to the colors and textures of what we just created and this is something that I use a lot when I teach plating and teach like presentation techniques. Look, this is how I plated it. So this is a blue ceramic, like an ink blue ceramic dish. Hello, Natasha. How are you? Welcome to the Queen's Curry Kitchen. This is the final plating that I've done and I've, I've chosen blue. You can see that's a very rich, like an ocean blue. I use that a lot, especially when I'm doing Mediterranean dishes because it reminds me of the ocean and the sky and i literally feel like i've been transported to santorini or i've been transported to the mediterranean sea and i'm picking i'm wearing like sea glass beads or whatever and i'm eating this really delicious food and the ocean waves are coming crashing so that's kind of like how i like to pair a lot of my mediterranean food it also reminds me of the blue tiles um in morocco in the architecture a lot of the Arab architecture which uses a lot of glazed tiles so you know there's a lot of influences that you can bring to your plate and you always always eat with your eyes so just one quick final presentation let me just show you how this looks so this is what our dish looks like and I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of greens a little bit of black pepper for good measure a hint of sea salt little bit of olive oil so if you're going to plate the salad and it's going to sit out for a bit for your guests to enjoy make sure you've taken the time to coat the individual rotini with oil or then when you finish your pasta you can put some olive oil on top or cooking spray and then cover it with saran wrap okay so this is what our salad looks like and in my opinion i think this is a better plating than the black or the white or the green but of course i really want to hear from you what you think of this this is a simple salad that you can make in your home any single day. If you like tuna, you can add uh, a can of tuna to this. Just break up the can of tuna. You can add that. If you like chicken and you have grilled chicken at home, you can add that to this. If you have pita chips, you can add that to this. If you have nuts or pumpkin seeds or walnuts or pecans, you can add that. If you're doing this for the fall, you can always add some apple pieces of Granny Smith apple. You can add a little bit of maple syrup to the dressing. It really tastes amazing, right? So depending on what season of the year you are in, you can actually make this your own. If you like crab, you can use imitation crab and you can make an entire dish out of it. So there are many ways to do this, right? So I do have to um, run now because I have to be somewhere, but I did do appreciate each and every one of you that joins me every single day whenever I go live. Um, I don't have a set schedule at all. But I would appreciate it if you could follow the page and uh, turn on your notifications so that every time I'm going live, you will be notified so we won't miss seeing each other, okay? As always, be blissful and be flavorful. Eat with your eyes, talk to your neighbors, say hello to 
strangers <laughs> not creepy strangers but say hello to people on the street it's the holidays and a lot of people might be feeling homesick might be feeling a little lonely and you never know a, a little simple salad like this um, a casserole that comes out of your kitchen or just a simple packet of hot chocolate with a little bow on it can make their day so take the time to appreciate that there's a lot of food around us if you are considering um, going food shopping buy some extra cans and boxes of pasta or non-perishable items and then donate it to families that could really use the help if you can't do that if you have kids in the house and they get extra presents and they have stuff from last year that they never even opened or used try to find a family in need who can use it there's also something called buy nothing groups on Facebook and you can literally put in the name of your neighborhood and you can say buy nothing New York City buy nothing Queens and so many uh, people who are a part of the group will pop up and you can actually just you know give them stuff that is in good condition that is new that is unused and it can make someone's day all right so like always i will see you again in the next video if you have not gone to my website and downloaded the free channel masala recipe honey you need to do that right now as soon as you put in your information it's going to come to your inbox if you want to drink my chai if you want to try my spices all the information is on the website queenscurrykitchen.com until next time be flavorful be blissful i will see you soon bye